sauteuring wine that needs just a little bit of salt. You got to admit that pretty ass. Oh, wait a minute. You know I forgot the most important thing? Yes. Oh, it's looking good. I guarantee that's a fine one. Oh, boy. Hello there, I'm Justin Wilson. I like to make casseroles and I can take most anything to make a casserole and make it taste good. In fact, I like just plain old macaroni and cheese casserole. I can't even remember how many ways I've cooked eggplant in casserole. That's why I write cookbooks so I can go back and look. The eggplant appetizer that I cooked on a series I made for Mississippi Educational TV more than 20 years ago is particularly good. Watch how I made it, then try it and see for yourself. On the same show, I showed how I make a roux with tomato sauce, a variation on the basic roux recipe, and how I cook boiled burr artichoke. Makes me hungry just thinking about it. I guarantee you. Hmm. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me. I guarantee. This is an artichoke that's been trimmed and cooked. Now, my papa, he didn't like artichokes, no. He told me one time, I'd just as soon eat a pine bar as an artichoke. So the next time I fixed this recipe, we got him a pine bar and put it on his plate. <laughs> now, I ain't gonna tell you what he said about that. <laughs> but when he tried his recipe, he changed his mind, and from then on, he's fighting for his bar artichoke just like the rest of us. And we're gonna fix that a little later. But right now, we're gonna show you how to fix something else. To start a meal off with, cause that's what this show is all about, appetizers. Now we're gonna start with an eggplant appetizer a la Justin, a la Justin. Now I'm gonna show you an eggplant. Now I don't mean a chicken either. That's an eggplant right there. You can do more with this vegetable, I think, than any other. I guarantee. Now, I'm gonna peel just a little bit of this to show you what I mean about peeling an eggplant. You wanna peel it to where you be sure you don't leave any of this black or green on there, because that, that has a, a bunch of bitterness to it. You see that? And I left a little right there and I'm able to get that off. That's peeling an eggplant. <laughs> now, I got one right here that's already peeled. <laughs> and I'm gonna slice that lengthwise to show you how we did that. See that? Now, now I'm gonna put that, that's about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch Thick, that's how deep that is. We put that in some, we got that what's already soaking in salt water. The marinating, soaking, some people call it, I call it that. Now the reason you marinate that is because this eggplant got a certain bitterness about it that this takes out. And we generally marinate them about two hour. Now, I got some that's already marinated right here, see? Now we drain that and rinsed it off real good to get most of the salt off, but we still kept some of it on there. Now, I've got a roux that's already fixed over here. Can you see that? That's the roux. We made this roux with tomato sauce. First, we browned the flour. First, you make a roux. Then we poured tomato sauce on it and brought it back to about the color that it was. That's that right there. Now, I'm gonna add some seasoning to that. First, I chop up one leaf of celery. Put it on now. And stir that in. And then we put a small amount of parsley on that. Ooh, that's wonderful seasoning. People just use it for garnishment, but they just don't know what I know, what a wonderful seasoning that is. And we stir that on there too. Now I got a cup of onions. Mmm. The invention of twin beds, right there. 
<laughs> and we put that on now. And we start that into them room. Hoo-wee. And also, too, I don't want to forget them bell pepper. We put on that. And I got some garlic that chop up real fine. It's usually a good idea to kind of let your stuff juice up a little bit before you put your garlic on there. Well, we don't have time today. We're gonna put it on there right now. Now. And we stir that up real good. And we cook this about 20 minutes over low, low heat to be sure that it don't burn itself, you know? But right now, I'm gonna change and put one up there. That I done hauled off already and cooked for 30 minutes. Now, to this right here, I'm gonna add a little something to that, make it more better, like a cup of and a half Whew. claret wine. <laughs> Not that pretty. That tastes good, too. I get our own tea. Hmm, hmm. We stir that around. Get that mix up. One tablespoon of Worcestershire. Rooster sauce. Pour on, measure that real careful, like. Then we're gonna haul off them and put the um, one teaspoon, Ooh, hate to insult myself, one teaspoon of Louisiana hot sauce. Measure that real careful, too. <laughs> and we stir that up, and we got to put a little salt to taste, about, um, oh, I would say, about, oh, that's a table, teaspoon and a half. And we stir that around, get it all mixed up. And I want to tell you something. If this is, if it gets too thick, well, then you add water. And you cook it just about an hour. Until all the vegetables are real done, and the wine got a chance to blend up with them tomato sauce. To take the bitter out of that. And I'm gonna put this down here out of my way too. I already got some fixed right here. Now, over here, I got the frying pan skillet black one. Would I done put about oh, three tablespoons full of olive oil on that. And I'm gonna fry just a few eggplant to show you how we start that. That's right. Go ahead and fry it there, you. We put that on there and let them fry. That's the eggplant what's been marinated and then rinsed and all them kind of things. You know, I keep telling you about they've been marinated and they've been rinsed and they've been soaked and all that. People are always ask me, how come you did that? How come you did that? And all that kind of stuff. Why? Well, in French, we, in South Louisiana, they don't say why, they say how come. <laughs> and, and, and but why? You know, I never will forget, there was a school teaching lady women in Baton Rouge it had a little boy cheering as he come across from the Mississippi River there, from one of them little kids in town. And everything she said, he said, how come? How come this? How come that? How come this? How come that? <laughs> she got so tired of how come, she don't know what they did. And finally one day, she said, don't say how come, say why. He said, how come why? <laughs> Watch here, I want to kind of clean that off. Be sure I don't left nothing like that up there. Get this right. Put this spoon over here. Now, I'm gonna put this out of my way. I better leave that up here. Don't wanna, don't wanna part with that hot sauce, no. Put that out of my way. And I'm gonna tuck this skillet down too. But I don't need that some more. 
now. Come. I got something right here I already did. Hmm. Not that pretty? Huh? Now that's some eggplant we don't fry till that's tender. See? Now I got a layer of eggplant on this pan right here. I'm gonna sprinkle that with some Romano cheese. Ooh. Man, that smell good. You got to like cheese for it to smell good, though. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put another layer. No, first what I'm gonna did there, I'm gonna put another layer, all right, but I'm gonna haul off there and put a little of them sauce without having spent a long time making. Ooh-wee. Ain't that pretty? I guarantee that's pretty. Uh oh look out there, you. Spread a layer of sauce. And then we're gonna put another layer of eggplant. Oh, still. Mm -hmm. Put a layer of eggplant. Ooh, we you talk about. See, and that just melt them cheese right on down. Mm. I guarantee. And taste good. Whoo. Put that on there like that. Leg plant. Layer cheese. A layer sauce. I used to make this a lot. I just sing a little chant to myself there like that. Leg plant, layer cheese, layer sauce. Let's get that right. <laughs> now, we're not gonna put but two layers of this. We're gonna put another layer of cheese, another layer of sauce. Ooh, wee. Mmm, that smells good, yeah. Straighten up there. There we go. Got it. Right there. And a layer of sauce. I mean, no damn cheese. <laughs> See, I got my song all wrong. <laughs> that good Romana cheese. Them little lump don't matter. But that's gonna haul off and melt down when I put them good sauce on there. That's hot, yeah. <laughs> now, we're gonna put them sauce to it. You right, mmm, that's good. <laughs> Ooh, I guarantee that's good. Mmm. Now, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. Put this in the refrigerator to chill it real good, cause it's more better chill. That's for sure. Let me get this out of my way. That is the finished product, right there. <laughs> and make a little slice there. Make a little slice there. A little slice there, just like you slice them chocolate candies. I'm gonna put that back there where I can get at it a little later. <laughs> now, let's get back to them recipe what I'm told you about at the start of this show. Artichoke. We start with four fresh artichoke. Burr artichoke. You know, there's two kind of artichoke. There's ground artichoke and there's burr artichoke. I want to show you something about this. You see, that stem, you don't want that. I do. Most people like it a little bit, but that just gets in your way when you're trying to fix it. You cut that off, chunk it away, or you can put it in your pot and cook. Then you get this front, and you trim off that like that so it'll look pretty, and also get them old stickers out of the way. And there's some stickers on that, too, you hear? Right there. And then you take a pair of kitchen scissors and trim off these others that are sticky, just like that. Then, 
see that? Now we put that in a, in a, in a pot that's large enough, got to be large enough to hold this. All for artichoke. Stand them up there and make them look real pretty. Then we're gonna haul off there. That's got, we got to cover that. They're gonna float, but eventually they'll sink on down. We're gonna pour about three quarters of a cup of olive oil in. We're making our sauce that we're gonna eat this with too. Don't have to put anything on these artichokes when they're done. Just eat them. Mm -mm. Now we got some onion chopped up. Put that on there. And some two fairly large cloves of garlic. And a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. See, that's your sauce. Now, that recipe in the cookbook, my cookbook, calls for four or three cup of sauterne wine. Take four, it's more better. <laughs> and then, I want to tell you while I did that, I can't help but talk about uh, them preacher was following my friend there. I got a friend was right as they finished them four lane highway down there by Baton Rouge. He was drove down the road. He was not drunk uh, much. He just took all four lane and both shoulders to drove down the road. Kabloom, kabloom, kabloom. And the preaching people was behind him, and he worried about him, kabloom, kabloom, and this Cajun light a cigarette, and his car straightened himself up, and zoom, the preaching people pass him right now. And he watched him on the rearview mirror, you know, because he's concerned about him for true. And he watched him too close. The road turned, but the preaching people don't. And kabloom! <laughs> he had one of them lovely live oak tree, what we got in South Louisiana. And man, that drunk, drove up there, the drunk Cajun drove up there, and he crawled out of his car, and that preaching people crawl out of his about the same time. The drunk say, you hurt my friend, huh? He said, not a scratching. Whoo, that drunk say, you don't know how lucky you are, no, I guarantee you fill plumb up with luck. The preaching people say, oh no, the Lord was with me in that automobile. The drunk say, you better let him ride with me the way you drive, you gonna kill him, I guarantee. <laughs> Now, I got to put a little Louisiana hot sauce. Uh, I put about a teaspoonful of Louisiana hot sauce. I like it a little hotter than that. And about a tablespoonful of Worcestershire. We'll measure this one real careful today. And put a little tablespoon, too. Hmm. Now, I guarantee that's gonna be good, yeah. Now, we add enough water to cover that. And we got to put some salt on that, too. Now, artichokes, I wanna tell you. You see, that, that, that'll cover that. That floats right now, but it'll cover that. Artichokes take a lot of salt. They just eat them salt up. So you got to put a, a lot of salt on it. That's what I'm looking for, right there. Nearly a tablespoonful of salt for each artichoke. Nearly a tablespoonful. Most nearly. Now. And we put that on a fire with a lid on that. And how you know when that's did? By its tender. We got some right here. Then you keep it covered. See, it's tender. The fog just pull all those leaves off. You keep that covered after you turn the fire off for about, oh, I guess, 30 minutes. Now, this is the pot with some with the plum, plum done. Right here. Now, this one right here, I want to show you something. I think everybody ought to know this. A lot of people have never eaten an artichoke. These leaves are delicious. That's tender. <laughs> you go ahead and eat that. But inside this artichoke, or the heart, is the heart of the artichoke. You pay a lot of money at the store when you go bought them heart of artichoke to make a salad with or just eat by itself. And I'm gonna took the leaf over there and get right down to the heart of the artichoke. 
That's pretty air. Now this right here, you can kind of taste that. But now we can get down to the part what you should not eat, no. That's this right here. It looks like a thistle. Thistle to you, thistle to me. <laughs> See that? You just pull that off and put it right here. Whoo! Don't that pretty. Now that is the goody, I guarantee. I'm gonna put a few leaves back here on that because they are good too. Let me put this back here. Hmm. Oh, man, that's fine. I guarantee. Now, I want to tell you something. Every time I get right here at this jogging block, I can't help but talk about a bunch of my friends down in Louisiana, them Cajun, them wonderful Cajun. You know, Cajun love the children. There ain't no two way about that like everybody else. And I got a bunch of them in one family, and all of them are fine-looking peoples, except one. He ain't but four feet, 11 inches tall, 17 year old. And they ain't ashamed for him, anything like that. They would just like for him to be like some of others. Some of them are six feet four, six feet three, and he got a daughter that's six feet herself. And they just kind of worry about that. And one day, the father year about one of them chiropractic people, you know, and he thought maybe he could took this church and maybe he could help him out. He did not know some better. So they drove about 43 miles to town and they get there and they go to this chiropractic people and man, he said, well, we'll try to help. So he took him into his office and he got a table what just about the height of this shopping block. That's what made me talk about that. And he lay him out there and he get four big men. One get a hold of one leg and other one get a hold of another leg, and another one get one arm, and another one get another, and they just pull just as hard as they can <laughs> to stretch them little short Cajun people. He said, now, you got to have them treatment every day for one hour at least. He got to be pulled on like that. And I know you live 43 miles from here, and you can't make it all the time, so how come you don't get your family together there, and one get one leg, one, the other leg, one arm, the other arm, and you did that yourself? My friend said, okay. So he left. And he did not see this uh, chiropractic people for about three months. And he brought himself to town, he would walk down the street, <laughs> and he see the chiropractic people. Oh, he said, I'm glad for you to see me. The chiropractic man said, I'm glad for you to see me too. How is you son? Oh, he said, he's just fine. Well, he said, have you been treating him like I told you? He said, oh yeah, one hour every day we put him on the chopping block, what we got at home, we use that. And we pull on him one hour like you told me. He said, well, has he grown any at all? He said, not one doggone inch, but he's confessed to 50 unsolved crime, I guarantee you. <laughs> now, I got, I got another little appetizing. Ooh, and I mean it is, I guarantee. Let me move this back here. Hi. And I've got a frying pan skillet down here. Let me put this so I can get at it a little more better. Now, there I go. In this, I'm going to make smoked sausage or saucisse in French. A la Justin. That's me. A la just. I'm going to start with two pounds of sausage, what I got chopped up in little, about one inch bite sized piece. We're gonna put this on a frying pan skillet, what we got right here. Turn it fire down a little bit. And then, I'm gonna add a quart of medium oysters. But I wanna tell you now, when you go select your oyster, you got to haul off there and be sure you get oyster when you get them in a quart jar, or a pint jar, or a 12 ounce pint jar. What you did, you be sure they ain't milky looking. Because if, you, if they're that way, they, they're fresh. They're just fresh as they can be. Now, we're gonna put on this, mm, some sauterne wine. Mmm, it smells good, yeah. Sauterne wine. And we got, uh, got some lemon juice here. We got to put that on there. Got to pull it up here where it get a good, I well, brought it to a good boil. And then I'm got to put a teaspoon, about a half a teaspoon full of salt. I'm gonna put on this. 
Mm. Now I got some, some of them concentrated garlic here. Garlic salt. See, that's how come I didn't put but a half a teaspoon. I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon full of them garlic salt, too, on that. Ooh, get that off my hand, man. And I done put the juice of, of a half a lemon on that. Mm, 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 mm. And I've got to put it just a little hot sauce. It ain't no good without that. That's for sure. Whoo. And I'm gonna let them cook. Just gonna let them cook, just like that. Let's get after it there now and start to cook. Oh, you kid. I got some what's finished right there. And I'm gonna get a few of that, like a piece of sausage, a sausage, a couple of oysters on a teeth pick, put them there. In fact, I think I'll get another sausage right now. And I'm also gonna get a little of them eggplant, but I got appetizer fixed right here. Whoo, you stand. Don't that good? And I guess you wonder how come I took the heart of them artichoke out there. I got that for me. <laughs> I took my leaves with me too, just in case I want that too. And I'm gonna put the lid back on this and took myself over here to this table, sit myself down, finish opening them wine, and just haul off, aye, and boil for a little bit in there. Ain't that pretty? I guarantee. Hmm. That's fun. Thank you. 